Hey, it's Tom and I'm back with another review for you. This time, the long-awaited Bees Putty Quadruple Firm. This is Bees Putty Quadruple Firm. And I want to start by saying a huge thank you to Stephen Martin who sent this to me so I could review it. Now Beast Buddy Quadruple Firm comes in two colors. This happens to be a green color, uh, but it also comes in a gray. And I know that you're probably used to seeing me sculpt in gray, but I'm actually excited to uh, sculpt this in a green because it's kind of like a, like a nice little callback to green stuff where I you know, got my start. In the past, I've sculpted miniatures with Bees Putty Plastic and Bees Putty Triple Firm. I much preferred the Triple Firm over the plastic, but I'm really excited to try Quadruple Firm to have a clay from Bees Putty that's just a little firmer. But before I get into that, I'm gonna show you a little bit of what we need to do to condition the clay. So here you can see I've broken off a chunk of the Bees Putty Quadruple Firm. And it is, I mean, I can move it, but I'm pushing with quite a bit of force to manipulate it. One thing I never did with the triple firm, and I'm not sure I shouldn't have done it, but I, I just didn't feel the need, was I didn't condition the clay. Now with this, this is a, seems like a pretty substantial jump to that uh, from there. So I'm going to go ahead and condition it based on the recommendations from the creator, Stefan, himself. Uh, who you can check out a link to his video here with some specific ways and a little more information about how he conditions it. But basically all you do is you put it in a poly bag with some very hot top tap water. And in this case, I'm going to put it in a thermos just to help keep the water, you know, nice and hot at my desk. So I can put, take, keep this in there between uses and just take a little bit at a time. So I'm gonna pop this in there, and then we will take a look at what it's like once we pull it out of warm water. This is how we need it to be if we're gonna go sculpt with it. And what I like to do, I've, I've played with this a little bit, um, but I am gonna go ahead and sculpt a, a test miniature to really get a sense of how it all works. But what I've done is I typically We'll just pinch off a small amount, just like I do with anything else. Keep a little bit in my hand here. Let the warmth of my hand keep it at a nice working temperature. Because we're working with miniatures, you're usually not putting on great big globs like that at once. And you can see this is much nicer and smoother. Because with any polymer clay, it always works a little better when there's smaller batches. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in my uh, thermos of hot water with a liner. Don't forget, with a liner, you don't want this to get wet. And that way it'll be, be uh, ready and nice and malleable for when I need more. All right, here's my little armature I'm gonna begin with. Just a very simple folded over piece of 24 gauge steel. This is gonna be a very simple uh, little gnome companion to go along with the uh, review I did and sculpt I did for the review of Bees Putty Triple Firm. One of the coolest things I found out about Bees Putty, and unfortunately I didn't find out about this until I was finished sculpting uh, with the Triple Firm, was that you don't necessarily need to put down a layer of green stuff and then adhere the polyclay too. That's the typical way I work with Fimo Professional and that's how I have worked with the various types of bees putty in the past. And what you do there is you would put a very thin layer of green stuff, epoxy putty, very sticky, self-curing, and then you would apply a thin layer of whatever polymer clay you're working with. And that just helps everything stay adhered to the armature, but we are gonna try something different. What I was shown by Stefan uh, was that you can actually create a little slurry 
little uh, paste of bees putty and apply it to the armature. And what that does is that basically creates a, a little film that is the same consistency and texture as the bees putty itself. If you've ever sculpted with polymer clay, you'll have noticed that it, while it doesn't always stick very well to um, metal and just various other materials, it sticks really well to itself. Um, I do want to point out though with Beast Putty, it actually does stick very, uh, very well to other surfaces uh, compared to other polymer clays. All right, so to mix this little slurry here, you, uh, I've got some isopropyl alcohol. This is 91%, I just put it in an old paint bottle so it'd be easier to use. I put this in a little plastic tray. This is just a little sample tile I have here, nice smooth surface. I'm just gonna put a few drops onto here. And this helps break down the clay. I've just got an old brush. And we're just gonna rub it on here, rub it all over the surface and try and make it uh, into a nice milky consistency. Uh, this is a little bit, maybe a little too thin still, so I'll just keep working it in, trying to get a little bit more of the clay into the alcohol. All right, that's looking a lot better. You can see how it's got, holds just a, just a tiny pinch of a form, but it's a very thin texture. My brush is nice and loaded. So now, go ahead and just spread this all over my armature. Now, this is a very thin armature here. Um, I didn't do any scoring or crimping of the wire ahead of time because I wanted to see how well it would do on a bare wire. Uh, and this, you know, does have, uh, it's folded over so there is a trench in the middle. So there's already a little bit more for the, the clay to grab onto. But we're just gonna kind of paste this on here. And that coated very, very nice and well. But there we go. So once I do this though, you have to leave it, set it aside, let it set up. You need to let some of that alcohol evaporate and give this a chance to solidify. Because what, you, what you've really done is you've put on that very, very thin skin of um, it's very similar to the skin of green stuff, but in this case, it will be putty. And if this works as it's supposed to, as I've seen it does, it saves a ton of time. You don't have to put on the putty, wait for it to cure, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm gonna set this aside and we'll be back to apply the first true layer of bees putty. All right, it's been a little over five minutes. I went ahead and threw this clay back in the back in my thermos just to make it nice and soft, easier to apply. So I'm gonna take a big chunk here and we're just gonna throw it on here and see how it sticks. Now one thing I'll say when you're putting this on, be a little careful not to, let's see, I just pressed it with my, my thumb and that does wipe away uh, a lot of the buildup that you, the slurry that you can paste on there. So you want to be very careful to just, you know, wrap this, press this and wrap this around. And it seems to work best. I actually played with the clay just maybe a pinch too long in my hands, you know, moving it around. But I think it works best to put it on there right when you get it out of the hot water. So it's nice and soft and a lot stickier feeling. As you can see, it is on there. It is, appears to be nice and well adhered. I may have to, I'll probably have to trim off a bit of this because I think I've over bulked it. This is gonna be a pretty small miniature just so I can uh, get the test all done. But what you can see right away with bees putty, and, and this is why it works, why this slurry works rather than having to put on a whole thing of green stuff and let it cure and everything is, Beast Putty is a much, even though it's a polymer clay, it acts a lot like a wax. 
So what that means is, is because it's very affected by heat and how malleable it is, um, it does a much better job than other polymer clays of being cool and firm at the core, but still able to be manipulated on the surface. So I'll just show you. So I'm, you know, you can see how as I'm pressing and cutting on this piece, it's very easy to pop it away. And at the top, you know, I'm just rubbing over this and it is just smoothing out very nicely and not moving all the base of clay. And I could add on, you know, this extra bit here and press it on and that's moving and going on, but it isn't really affecting the base. You know, you can press in and add details still, no problem. But yeah, this is, this is working really well. Beast Putty Quadruple Firm has everything I've come to expect from all the Beast Putties. It has a very nice texture with a little bit of extra tack so it sticks on better. And it has that unique, more wax-like property that you don't find in other polymer clay. That is where it, as it cools, and sets up, it, it stays more firm and in place with the elements you've laid down and allowing you to better manipulate just the surface. That does make it a little harder to do some of the pluck and pulling that you would get when working in a putty, but frankly, that you have that problem with all polymer clays. And it's not really a problem. You just have to get used to it like you do with any medium. Right now, you can get bees putty in four grades. You have firm, double firm, triple firm, and quadruple firm. And I've used them all in one form or another over the years. However, while I've always liked Bees Putty, the earlier firm and double firm seemed very, very, very soft for my sculpting style. And I'm not, I'm not a sculptor who wants very firm clay. So when the triple firm came along, it was really nice and I liked it quite a bit. But the quadruple firm is a very nice level up from that uh, because there was still every now and then there was at times the triple firm where I felt like it was maybe just just a little bit too easy to manipulate. And th that's what's nice about this. It's a little bit has because of the firmness. So it's a little easier to control. You get maybe a little less more little, well, a little more forgiveness when it comes to uh, leaving tool marks and things like that. Bees Putty is an excellent polymer clay, especially for sculpting miniatures. What it's going to come down to in the end is, is your particular touch, how heavy your hand is while you're sculpting miniatures. If you need or prefer a more firm clay, then hands down, get the Bees Putty quadruple firm. If you need something a little bit softer, go with triple. And if you like super, super soft clay, well, try one of the two lower ones, but... As those aren't for me. For now, I'm going to stick with the triple and or the quadruple. In fact, I might even end up doing a little mix of the two to finish this miniature off. But I'll save that for another video. Have you ever tried Bees Putty before? Whether it's quadruple firm or any of the other ones, go ahead and leave a comment down below and let's keep the discussion going. And whether you're using polymer clay, putty, or some other weird material I've never even heard of to sculptor miniatures, Remember, keep sculpting.